I don't know why I already started recording. <laughs> it's a terrible intro. Wait, again. Hi, my name is Beatrice. I'm an author and I've been writing books for as long as I remember. It's just a little bit later in life, I started putting them into paper. As I said before, I'm a writer, also an illustrator, social media manager, and IT professional, but that kind of like doesn't really matter right now. But since I'm not an orator, I tried to write a script for this, and turns out that I just painstakingly detailed every single thing that I wanted to say in 7,337 words, which is also funny. So I'm gonna be reading from my very, very long document. I had thought about what I want my official first video to be so many times, and I think it's only fair to do it about this. Last disclaimer, English is not my first language. Judging by my accent, I'm pretty sure you already caught on to that. But I will try to do my best to enunciate properly. I can't promise to talk like a native. Sorry about that. Anyways, throughout my whole life, I unfortunately lived through a lot of very bad moments to that honestly, some of them I consider horror stories in regards of writing and specifically the publishing industry or publishing in general. And even though my Spanish speaking audience know them, I only very recently starting even attempting to get an English speaking audience. So I think, it's good to be transparent with you and tell you about this very defining moments in my life, in my career as an author that really impacted my life. And all of that is very redundant. As I said, this is, this is the only part of the video that's not scripted. That's the reason why I had to write everything down. So first of all, I guess I should start with why. I started writing. A couple of years ago, I stumbled upon the concept of maladaptive daydreaming. Um, I did it online when I was researching, I don't remember what, and it really resonated with me and everything that I have felt all my life, but especially when I was little because I didn't know how to manage it. This is an excerpt talking about this topic from the Sleep Foundation website, which I also will put in the screen. Sometimes known as daydreaming disorder, maladaptive daydreaming describes a condition where a person regularly experiences daydreams that are intense and highly distracting. So distracting, in fact, that the person may stop engaging with the task or people in front of them. These daydreams may be triggered by real-life events or stimuli, such as noise, smell, conversation topic, or movie. Maladaptive daydreamers may dissociate from reality to absorb themselves completely in their daydream and may unknowingly act out the behavior or speak the dialogue of characters in their daydream. The content of daydreams can be richly detailed and fantastical, while others feature an idealized version of the daydream. Fun, right? I did all of those when I was little. So obviously I was a weird kid and I was a bullied kid. And uh, there was also a girl in school that hugged trees. So that kind of deflected the bullying a little bit, but I digress. Ever since I was little, I remember living a double life and being more aligned to that one than the actual reality. I would spend as much time as possible in my own fantasy world. And still to, the, to this day, I remember things that would happen there extremely vividly. Like, 
as if it happened in real life, if not more. I would meet people and I would go through all sort of cool adventures. And I would often be taking bits and pieces from movies or, or books or real life events that were around me or that I actually lived through sometimes. The just things that caught my attention. Little by little, this double life consumed me. It was up to the point that I didn't want to live my actual life and preferred to recluse myself to be able to daydream in peace. When time passed, I realized how dangerous this was and how much it saddened me to not have anyone know this amazing world that I've been living in for years. So I started writing about it. And it read like fiction, but for me, it was almost a memoir. I was giving life to all the people that I had met so closely and finally able to put into words all those experiences that were more meaningful to me than some of the ones that I had gone through in my own real life. In the beginning, my plan was to only write about one particular fantasy saga and make it big. I wanted to portray every single detail of this world that only existed inside my head and was planning to dedicate my whole life to it. I would make several character sheets to make sure I didn't miss any detail. I would write down world building notes in my notebooks and plan out how I wanted to tell each story. I had a million plot ideas and I didn't know where to start, but I tried my best to make it something that people would understand. I wanted them to feel how I felt. And this is something that comes up again and again. And afterwards, when people would ask me or in interviews or that like I'll get to it later or anything, I would always say that the reason why I started writing was because I, I wanted people to feel, people that felt how I felt to know that they're not alone. And I know that's something very cringy to say, and it's something that I came up with when I was like 12, but I think it's what encompasses the whole experience more. And if I started writing when I was like 10, I, I guess it makes sense than the way that I word it sounds kind of cringy because who's not cringy at that age? Anyways, I was obsessed. I was obsessed with that life and my only healthy way to live through it was writing it. So obviously it was the only thing that had meaning in my life at the time. And a lot of times after that still is the only one, to be fair. Over the years, that particular story grew to somewhat of a novel. Its title, Chaos, encompassed not only everything the story was about, but also the turmoil that had been happening in my life thanks to it. I started out in notebooks in class and then I typed it out on my computer and slowly started uploading it to Wattpad. The more I wrote, the more sure I was that writing was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I started trying to investigate a little about what I could do to build an actual writing career. I found so many writing contests that seemed like great opportunities for me to practice and also get myself known. So I gave them a try and little by little I realized that maybe there was more in my writing than just one fantasy saga. When time passed, I kept using my stories as a way to cope with reality, especially whenever I needed to deal with something with some sort of internal turmoil. Eventually I had a big repertoire of books that spoke to me personally because very important parts of me were connected to them. I feel like if I take everything that I have written my whole life, all the stories, because I, I only write fiction and sometimes poetry, uh, you can clearly see the stage of my life and everything that was happening in that moment when you read through them. And, and I think that's beautiful and that, that just says something. I think that that speaks to me and I think it would still speak to me even if I was a third person. Because you can feel it. There's some, the emotions, the characters, the connections. When I was writing as a child, you could understand that there was a child doing that the same way that when I was writing about situations 
that I went through when I was a teenager, you can feel the teenage angst and like all the stress that came with like that coming of age type of story in life. See, that's the reason why I had to write everything because I go off the script and then I just don't make sense of myself. But <laughs> just as my passion for writing started with the single fantasy saga in mind, so did my first horror story with the publishing industry. The chaos around chaos. There is more than one alternate dimension that you know of. There are people with abilities you only dreamed of possessing. There are places where the dead walk among the living and small beings that appear to be children but actually have lived longer than you. What would you do if you woke up in such a place and they assured you that you are someone else? This is how the story of Giselle begins, who will do everything in her power to return to her place of origin. What will she do when she gets embroiled in a war between factions and they start calling her by another name? Join me to discover it. This is the synopsis from Chaos, which means chaos in Spanish. As I mentioned before, Spanish is my first language, and all the stories that I am going to talk about here are currently written only in Spanish. This was the beginning of it all. What I considered a 12 would be my magnum opus. I spent years rewriting this isekai self-insert until I believed it was perfect. Blood twist, it was not. And eventually became desperate to publish. I felt like if I didn't do it before I turned 18, it would be way too late for me and I would never ever be the next big deal in fantasy publishing, ever. I had started publishing stories in Wattpad before then, but it didn't do enough for me. I had big dreams of my books in libraries and people around the world being able to read the story and leave the things that I had left. So I sent out an insane amount of emails to any publishing house I could find that was accepting manuscripts at the time. It is very safe to assume, you'll be right, I had no idea what I was doing. I tried to learn the do's and don'ts from the internet, but still I was the definition of young and desperate. So I found a Polishian house on Twitter and decided to engage. It was based in Spain. At that moment, I lived in my home country, Venezuela. And they mentioned they edited books of any genre of new authors. I decided to send them a message because why not? It, I know, very professional. I send them a Twitter DM. I, I was just sending out proposals like crazy, and I really have nothing to lose. Throughout this video, you will see that I made a very important mistake. I didn't research enough. I didn't contact people with experience, and I was not even very certain about my own words. I kind of just like let it be very obvious that I had no idea what I was talking about. And It is very pertinent to this particular story. So I sent them the Twitter DM, right? They answered me that same day. I was like, oh my God, I, I screamed. I screamed so loud because I, I felt like for the first time, my dream could come true. And, and it was so easy. I was like, oh my God, I just found you on Twitter. And you already said yes. Like I must be amazing or like, I don't know, I thought it was destiny or something. They hit me with, send us your manuscript, we'll make you a contract. I was like, oh my God, they, did they research me? Am I famous? Am I actually the next big deal? I, I wasn't, obviously. But I, I, I just couldn't believe it. 
where had this publishing house fallen from the sky come from? It is very important to clarify that at the time, I had not even the slightest idea of what a self-publisher or like co-publishing was. I just thought that all publishers worked the same way. So for me, this was just like a very legit, very traditional publishing house that had actually taken some interest in my book for some godforsaken reason. And if someone based in the States, or like in probably European countries as well, uh, kind of wonders why I was contacting publishing houses and not agents, is because the Spanish-speaking world of books and publishing works a little bit different. We really don't have agents. It's not something that's customary. You usually have the one-on-one -on -one conversation directly with the, with the publishing house or with someone representing it. And it will come into later stories that sometimes that publishing house gives you an agent and the agent helps you with the process of uh, gathering more books for them. But you basically, as an author, have to do the, your whole thing. The agents are like not a thing, as far as I'm aware. And I have a lot of friends that have had book deals with very big publishing houses and like match uh, Planeta, which I don't remember who owns them. And like uh, Penguin Random House and all of them. And it's not through an actual agent. I also have experiences of friends that hired an agent in this like again like spanish speaking world of uh, publishing and th the agent basically was like a waste of money because they wouldn't the how the publishing houses wouldn't pay attention to the agent as much as they would do with the authors directly anyways this is like a a little bit of a tangent because so i felt that it was necessary to explain why even though i did like two seconds of research, I didn't contact an agent. It's not customary. It's not a thing. It's, as far as I know, never been a thing, at least as far as I'm aware. So I sent them an email and I reread it and it makes me go like, oh, baby, because it's very obvious that it's a very innocent email from someone that is extremely inexperienced and it demonstrates perfectly my zero, my zero experience. Again, I'm like reading the thing with this whole matter, right? And it generates like 7 million red flags and the words that I used and all the things. You read it and you're like, yeah, this person doesn't know what they're talking about. And that's what I was talking about before. I, I really, really, really cannot stress enough how important it is to speak appropriately to at least give the impression that you are very sure of what you're saying in life in general. And I probably wouldn't have been taken advantage of a lot of times in my life if I followed this advice. So here's the translation of the email I sent, and I'll put it on the screen as well, but it's in Spanish. So unless you read Spanish, I think you're going to want to hear me. Good morning. I had already communicated with you via Twitter to inquire about the publication of a work here in Venezuela. Before sending you the manuscript, I would like to explain a bit about the work in question and clarify some doubts. The title I chose for it, it's Cows. I finished the initial manuscript a few years ago and have since edited it three, time, three times. I do not have enough money to pay for an editor so I tried to educate myself a bit on the matter to polish it as best as I could. However, I'm aware that it still has things to fix. Originally, it had a larger extent, but in view of the fact that I plan to write a sequel, it seemed better to me to finish it where it is now. Currently, the prologue and the first three chapters are on Wattpad, as I wanted to see the acceptance it had with the public. Here's the link. Link. If there's any inconvenience due to this, I can remove them without any problem. My main concern is with regard to the monetary part. I would like to know if the publication would cost something, how much it would be, and how the payment would be. 
Thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to your prompt response. Yes, I'm making fun of me when I was young, but I can do it because it's myself and I give myself permission. By the way, I was like, I'm pretty sure I had already reached 18. I think I was like 19 at this time. I do not know how to do math from the top of my head, so I do not want to calculate this. But um, 27, and this was in 2014, going to 2015, so you do the math. So let's, let's analyze the email with, oh, let's analyze the email with which they responded to me. Let's ignore the condescending tone that denotes that it's very obvious that he saw me as a clueless girl. Every time I say he or they, I'm kind of like referring to the same person, like it's the publishing house. And I was communicating with who I learned later was the owner of the publishing house. Right then, since they were offering to give me a budget for the publication, I could have understood that it wasn't a traditional publishing house, but I had no idea. I didn't know how it worked. And I thought there was only one modality, like only one way that all of them worked. And so I, I thought that this was part of those ways. Oh my God. This is the email that he sent me. Hello, Beatrice. We see that this is your first work and you have special affection for it because it will be your debut as an author. So we can make an effort and leave the publication at the most economical price possible. We would need to know how many pages in total it has to make you a budget, as the monetary aspect seems to concern you especially. Another thing we would do so that the amount does not increase much is to start with only 50 copies. If they sell, well, we would print more. The method of payment would be in electronic money or PayPal in USD. Right now, it is the only option from Venezuela, and that is how the authors pay us from there. We will let you pay in two installments, one in advance, 50% in parentheses, and the rest in 30 days. So you can sell the books in the meantime. We would also help you sell it as an ebook, if you want, through the best portals and online stores on the internet at an international level, offering you 20% of the profits. As for the editing, do not worry. We will have it perfectly written and a very beautiful and well-written book will come out at the same time that is our job. In addition to the graphic design of the cover, layout, and printing. I can also make fun of this guy because he was a dick. By the way, he was the owner of the publishing house, the person that was managing the printing, the person was communicating with me. And later on, I learned that he was the editor. He was probably also the graphic designer, but thankfully I did visual communication in college. And even though I wasn't able to graduate because I had to flee my country because I was afraid for my own life, I had a lot of friends that had experience and helped me out with the process. So in addition to the amount that they asked for, which I don't really find relevant to mention, they offered me this option. Honestly, I have never heard of any other self-publishing house doing this, but it was their way of working, I guess. I, I just thought that was all the same. Like, they all work pretty much working the same way. So this is the, the second option. We also give you the option not to pay us anything in principle, but you commit to sell 100 copies in 30 days. In this case, the 60% of what was collected or the part of the publisher you would have... Oh, uh, I'm an idiot. Uh, the 60% of what was collected or the part of the publisher you would have to send us via PayPal in USD a month after receiving the books, and the remaining 40% would be for you, according to the editing contract. We will help you with the promotion of your book on the internet, on the internet, perhaps 
you also find the second option interesting. You can choose the one that suits you best, Beatrice. Have a nice day. So then I answered, right? It was a sweet and innocent email on my part. Also, who speaks like that? You're gonna, you're gonna hear my email. I'm gonna be like, yeah, like you're really trying too hard. And it's very obvious I was just trying to sound like an adult. I was probably 19 or 20. Like I, I was basically still a child. I didn't know anything about life. And I was like, oh my God, I have to be professional now. What's going on? It's scared. But this was my, my email. Greetings again. <laughs> After much contemplation, I have decided on the second option. I wanted to ask roughly how much the editing costs would be and what the payment method would be. I'm not familiar with PayPal, so I would like to know a few more details about it. The edited manuscript has 389 pages with a 12 size Arial font in 1.5 line spacing. I would also like to know if it's necessary for me to send it in a specific format to facilitate its editing. As a final question, I would like to know if there's any inconvenience with me publishing it under a pen name, as Beatrice Lebrun is not my, my original name, but the one I use for writing. I look forward to your prompt responses, and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I, I want to cry. <laughs> so in retrospect, I see that the man took the time to explain things to me very beautifully although I keep seeing a lot of red flags everywhere now that I had to reread through all those emails and like I've done it several times because I, I made a twitter thread two years ago that I heavily referenced to do this in Spanish again but yeah I didn't see them back then um whatever I chose the option of I sell so many books and I give them that amount. But when the guy answered me back, he did it with information about the other option, the one that I had to pay them up front and all the process. Here's his email. Good morning, Beatrice. Regarding your book appearing with your pain name, there's no problem at all. Some authors prefer to do it that way and it's a totally correct option. You tell me that the book has 389 pages. That would slightly increase the price of the printer. Everything else would be the same. I didn't know exactly the number of pages it had. Please send me the manuscript in Word format for review and editing. If you tell me that you're from Venezuela, as other writers from your country have explained to me, I think you should request electronic money from your bank and then they would give you at most 400 US dollars. Then there is the option of having a PayPal account in USD or that a relative or friend allows you to use their PayPal account. As our other author did this to send us his money for our editing work on the last book. First he sent it and then his wife in two times the following month through PayPal. And so they were able to complete the payment. I don't know if you have PayPal, but you simply register, link your account with a card or bank account, and you can buy or pay for things online. In this case, it would be indicating this email address of the publisher to make the payment. In terms of costs, you would have to cover the printer expenses, and the rest would be paid within 30 days. If you have any other questions, I am here for whatever you need. Have a nice day. Bruh. So, first of all, second, not scripted tangent. The whole PayPal thing and everything is way, way more complicated in a lot of other countries that are not first world. And it was a nightmare in Venezuela. It's not that easy. Venezuela is not dollarized. Like we, we have our coin is called Bolivares. It's extremely devaluated. Uh, inflation, insane things. And uh, 
it's very expensive to buy dollars. So even like one dollar, it's like, I don't even know how to explain it. The minimum wage in Venezuela is three dollars a month, probably less at this point. So this was a very big deal, right? But I was so excited. Like, I really thought this was my opportunity. And it makes me so sad. But anyways, I made the awful, awful, awful mistake of sending them my manuscript. Like, right then and there. I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm just going to... An enormous back and forth through email followed. But uh, I think I read enough emails to you to kind of like have you understand the way that I was speaking versus the way that he was talking to me, especially like I was a young woman. He was like an older guy. So like very condescending, very, I clearly know this and you don't. So don't worry, child. I will help you with everything. And uh, no more reading emails. It, at some point, someone wants to see the emails. It's, it's fine. But I don't think it's necessary. Uh, whatever. You, if you are a novel author that was like me that time and have no idea of anything, do not send your manuscript like that. I beg, I beg you. It, it's in my, in my script. It says, I beg you, in capital letters. Never, absolutely never send your manuscript on a whim without checking it and rechecking it and make sure that it's perfectly fine and prepped. And then after that, you reread everything one more time and make sure everything is good before you send. I, of course, sent it on a whim. Because obviously, like, you, you, you have seen the character. I said in my email I hadn't finished editing it, like that last little run through. Because in my mind, I was like, oh, they're going to take care of it and they're professional. So it's going to be easier if they just like do everything and I don't have to do anything. It's like, you know, published author. And uh, it was awful. Half of the manuscript had long dashes in dialogue and half of them had short dashes. And in Spanish, the convention is that like you have to use a long dash and it's completely different than a short, short one. And actually, like you have to kind of like make sure to have some sort of way that word automatically puts the long dashes for you. It's it's just the way that the format's supposed to be. So not even that. Like I didn't even go through the time of like replacing the all the dashes. And uh, there was a lot of irrelevant data about the format that I was just too lazy to accommodate like weird margins, weird paragraphs, like a, a lot of weird things that I just, I was just so sure that they were going to take care of it. And the guy was going to do exactly what he said he was going to do, which was give me a beautiful, perfect book because it was so nice and so pure and so innocent and so angelical that I just deserved a perfect book. Um, whatever. I even made a comment that said, oh, there are many things that are not explained because it's a book series. So I will explain it in the next one. After roughly 15 days, I hadn't heard anything from them, but I was already moving with everything. I was like, that's it. They're making it happen. So I have to make it happen too, right? I contacted a trusted designer to see if they could help me with the cover. Uh, well, he was my boyfriend at the time, but he was still a trusted designer. Actually, that cover is beautiful, extraordinary, marvelous. I I love it. It's like the only thing, good thing the book had. He even designed the typography for me and everything. It's mwah, one of the best ones I've seen, to be honest. And I asked the, the guy, Tomas, if there was any problems with that. Uh, through an email, I sent him an email. He answered back and it had been again 15 days and with his answer, a lot of everything else he said, oh my God, the book is finished, but it's just, I just edited it. I'm, I'm just that good. 15 days, the whole entire book fully, completely edited. I was completely shocked. And uh, I mean, I just thought it was normal. 
obviously it's not now that I have, you know, going somewhere in life, paid professional editors and everything. It, there's usually a back and forth. They, um, my editor, which is my best friend, and I love her with my entire life. Um, she's the best editor I have met in my entire life. Also, we, she makes comments in like a Google Doc, and then like I have to review them, and then I have to re like go through them, and then like she goes through them again. It's a whole process. I didn't know that, and this guy was just like, I did everything. I was like, shit, cool. But one very important fact never crossed my mind. Weren't they supposed to send me the contract before even touching the book? Because we we hadn't signed anything, and this guy just said that he finished editing the entire thing in 15 days with nothing signed. Mm, so, yeah. This happened in July. And the guy went completely MIA until September because, oops, they were on vacation for two months. So, I waited and I just trusted that everything was good. That answer where he told me that he had edited the whole thing, he basically said, yeah, no worries. You can choose your own cover, whatever. I will be drafting the contract to send it to you. So at this point, I still was September, still nothing. We hadn't signed anything. And apparently, like, the book's ready. I don't know, bro. Anyways, in September, I say anyways a lot. In September, when he got back to me, The email finally contained the single attachment I was longing for my whole entire life. The fucking contract. Uh, so, whatever. Here's what the contract said. It was for a year. They were going to print 100 copies and give them to me to sell. The second option, right? We spoke about this. But also, as an author... I had to commit to covering the, co the costs of editing, layout, and printing of the copies and shipping. They would also charge me for the graphic design, but I, I incurred that with that myself. So wasn't that the first option? And the second option was you don't pay us anything, you pay us just what you sell? Mm -hmm. Anyways, the price they told me was quite high. Like, very. Double of what they had originally told me. But they let me pay it in two installments. Yay! The publisher's distribution was going to be exclusively digital. So I was going to be the only person that was going to handle physical copies. And then they were just going to, I don't know, like, upload PDF on Amazon, they probably didn't even go through the process of converting it through e EPUB with a free converted from the internet or something. So they were going to transfer my percentage of sales to me every three months. Reprints would equal a new contract. In another clause, they stated that they would advertise the book on Amazon, probably print on demand. And then they would announce the novel on blogs, forums, and networks. They actually had a spam Twitter bot to do the trick, but I just learned about that later, obviously. So let's pause to say that in my house, we all were in crisis. This was the opportunity to finally fulfill my dreams that... I The author the experience that I was destined to, that I was born to my whole life, my only purpose in life. And this was it. If it wasn't this, it was never, ever, ever going to happen again. But it was so expensive. Again, it was expensive in, do in US dollars. It was five times more expensive in my country. <laughs> It was too much money for us. 
And I cried. I cried a lot. I screamed and cried. I cried for days. I remember myself very vividly crying for days, not wanting to leave my room because I felt like I would miss this opportunity because life was unfair and I just didn't have the money for it. And it, it was awful. My parents were desperate because also I was crying for days. Obviously, they, they were desperate. And they were trying to move around to talk to people to see how we could get the money if like a, a person could give us a little, the other person could give us another little or something. Like We never made that kind of money in my house. And uh, to come with it so quickly or like, oh, in two installments, it was very stressful. I'm pretty sure I put them through a very, very, very stressful situation and the country was going to shed also. So that couldn't have helped. And I'm sorry for that. And I honestly didn't know better. So whatever, it was absolutely insane. In the end, we asked a family member that actually, oh, I clicked out of the document. Okay. In the end, uh, we asked a family member that actually lives here in the States if we could borrow it or if he could help us out, whatever. He, he just helped us out with it. He, he came to an agreement with my parents. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I was still barely an adult. So I was just crying about the money and my parents were trying to give in, which it sounds very entitled, but I guess I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my reality. But I was fortunate enough to have that person help us with the money and I feel very bad because it was clearly not going to end well. Like right now that you see everything that has been happening, I really just wanted my dream to come through, which sucks because I was... I got taken advantage of, and this wasn't going to be the last time. But we did it. And three months of more back and forth passed with the publishing house. And it was just emails about logistics, the outside design that thankfully was not made by them. The guy finally asked me for the synopsis, uh, Tomas, the editor slash owner slash marketer slash everything I don't know and uh, it was like three months and just after that he was like oh by the way what's the synopsis of the book kind of sketchy he also mentioned that the book was so well written he was like I'm perplexed this is so good you're such a good writer and it was not well written okay like the first time I wrote it I was 12 and the last time that I heavily rewrote it I was 16 it was everything that you expect from, uh, again, self-insert isekai written by a teenager that was very much edgy and a pick-me at the same time. Like, look, look at me. <laughs> he congratulated me in this, like, extremely condescending manner. And, you know, this is a good example. You know when a child draws something absolutely unintelligible it's like just just a doodle and they're like it's starry night from my goal i'm an artist and you just pat their head their head and you're like yes darling of course you're an artist you're a real artist this is beautiful that it, it was just exactly like that the way that that man treated me the editing inside the book was awful oh my god i i wish i could show it i it's probably in my email somewhere the table of context, contents, contents didn't have a format. Like, I remember it was like this. It, it was skewed for some reason, but it wasn't on purpose. It was just, I'm pretty sure there, there, there were like ways to do this very specifically and professionally. It's like you, the people wrote, well, I had made it, so I don't know, like he fucked it up because... Actually, the manuscript that I gave him looked better than what he gave me. But it was like first chapter, it didn't, they didn't even have numbers. And then first chapter, and then a lot of like manually put dots. And then like the page number. And then the other one, but sometimes they had like an extra space at the beginning. So it looked kind of like like this. It was awful. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I, I, I just paid a shit ton of money for this. What the fuck is this? Uh, it was it was awful. 
whatever. He sent me that. I remember there was a little bit of back and forth, like, hey, I'd like at least fix this. And then a week afterwards, he was like, well, since everything is ready, do you want us to start publishing the ebook online? You know, because a published author and all of that. And uh, of course, I was like, oh my God, yes, a published author. So the book was already in Google Playbooks and Amazon and Kindle. But in the email that he sent me, everything changed again. Like this guy kept on every single time. And it's crazy because I have it all on writing. But every single time, he just said something entirely different. Now, instead of 100 copies that I was going to sell after paying so much for an option that in the end they just changed, I was going to have 70 copies and 30 for the publisher. What about those percentages they never mentioned? Nothing. Nothing forgotten. They start of existence. It seems to me that I was seeing everything with rose-colored glasses and didn't notice any of the red flags of this whole issue. I mean, it's kind of obvious. Something I have to admit is that I didn't cover the expense, like the actual money. It, it was my family who helped me. And only with time, I really understood how expensive that was and how much it meant for like people that weren't expecting to have to spend all that money at once to do it. And they did it out of love. And uh, I, I feel terrible for that, really. But I started doing my own marketing. And I started sending emails to every single magazine, blog, newspaper, or anything that I could find online. I had several positive responses. And uh, other places that offered me marketing services that in the end I didn't hire because some way in my brain, I thought they were doing, they were going to do it for free, just for love of art. Something's not, not ticking. Meanwhile, the guy was already sending me the physical copies and everything seemed to be going smoothly. In theory, there was a little bit of back and forth with the address and everything, but that's kind of not their fault. And uh, I think they were sending it from the printer directly. I, I'm not sure. I uploaded the book to Goodreads because I was so excited to finally be a published author. I thought that reviews were going to fly and everything was going to be perfect. And I actually got an interview on the radio, which is on my Instagram. I have pictures of it. It's amazing. I think the radio show still exists. I know they still follow me on Instagram and they interact with every single thing that I post. I love that experience so much. And that is like one of the good things that actually came from this. And I wish someday I can go back. But I can go back to my country because I don't want to be dead. So <laughs> the publishing house supposedly organized a book baptism that just never happened. And again, I was in Venezuela. They were in Spain. They were in entirely different continents. So of course, I had no way of checking if that had been true. Fun fact, the ISBN, which is the my microphone, which is the, um, the barcode in the back that they had given me originally was the one from another author. So if you scan that, it would actually have another entire book come up with it. I, I think eventually they fixed it. Um, I don't remember. But whatever, eventually my copies of the book arrived and uh, in the email communication, he kept repeating over and over that he saw that he like that he was so happy and he was so happy for me and this all was happening to me because I was such a good person and I deserved it to happen to me because I was such a good person and it was so noticeable that was good and that I was excited and that he was so happy they were able to make my dream come true and it's like it, it just irks me right now that I, I think about it and I digest it and I wrote that in the script and it's just like it still irks me it's just like 
Mm -hmm. And also, like, why did you have to go out of your way to be like, oh, I'm doing you a favor publishing your book. I'm like, I'm so good. And like, no, you deserve it. My ear just died. Anyway, so do like this. This is when I when I get emotional. It's gonna be worse the longer that this video happens. It was just that I don't know the attitude, the whole, like whole condescending. It it really rubs you the wrong way. Um, he did tell me I was a good person almost every email. Like, was that love bombing? Like, probably. Just like, I'm scamming you, I'm taking advantage of you, but you're so nice. So I moved around a lot. And when I say I moved around, it's a common Venezuelan saying, just to say that you're like, you move towards achieving something. And that's the way that I speak in Spanish. And this was written in Spanish originally. So like, please bear with me. But I actually sold the first 70 copies, every single one of them. I sold them all because I was like, I was just that convincing, I guess. I did it between family and friends. And uh, I just ordered a hundred copies. Like I sent them an email. I was like, hey, I sold it so good. So might as well ju just send me more, right? Um, I should have no, I, I should note, it should be noted. I don't know how to speak anymore. That the whole thing about selling the 70 books didn't even cover a fraction of what was spent because again the the coin in Venezuela is very devaluated so it just means nothing in comparison like it was like probably a one percent like selling all the books it was one percent of the actual money that we spent on it but I was so happy that people had my book and I had my book and I, I had it in my light nightstand and I was getting all these things and People were buying it and people were reading it. And I was just going through that author experience that I felt like I deserved my whole life because I worked so hard since I was like a child, you know, to make this happen. And it was finally happening that I just I didn't want to see any of the bad things because seeing the bad things would mean that the dream would be over. Of course, it turned into a nightmare several times. The guys answered me about the copies and the price for the prints after I sent them that email. But I had no idea how they were doing with their advertising and how much they were supposedly moving uh, towards like actually getting the books sold on their end or any ebooks or anything. Like, I don't know, bro. Listen, especially considering how much I was doing, I got a radio interview by myself just by bothering people with emails. Like, they couldn't even post a decent image made with a, a free template downloaded from the internet in their Facebook page. No, not even that. Of course, they didn't. The only marketing I found was a couple of auto-generated tweets and I believe an auto-generated Facebook post. Actually, after writing the script, I reread the original Twitter thread that I made. There were three Facebook posts on the same week when the ebook was released, and then they never mentioned it ever again. Ever. At this point, I was doing my own marketing images as well. And again, it's what I said, it was in another continent. So there's no way that I could go in person and be like, Joe, like, what are you doing? Are, are you doing like some ads on the street? And that's the reason why I don't see them. Or just, I couldn't just go to talk to them. It's not only two different countries, two different continents. And this was Europe. So like, not only getting out of my country was hard, but also flying to Europe was very expensive. So obviously that was not going to happen. But I'm pretty sure they didn't do anything at all about my book. At this point, it was November, and because of the holidays, the next time they responded was around the end of January. The guy just asked me for more money because of the prints. He also sent me a new contract, just specifically because I wanted to print more copies. Also, fun fact, if you looked for my book on Amazon back then, you could see that the editor's name was actually titled as co-author. Yep. 
the guy that had been talking to me and editing my book, uh, he didn't do shit, to be honest, uh, said, whoops, Amazon's crazy. How would I appear as co-author? Let me fix that. He just re-uploaded the book again. So if you looked it up, it just appeared two times. One of them with him listed as co-author and one of the with him listed as editor. But whatever, I was happy. I was living my dream. I went to a book fair. I signed books to a lot of people. Um, the radio interview, I contacted a lot of blogs. They did reviews on me. None of the reviews were, were good, of course, because the book was kind of shit. But they were very lenient, to be honest. I would rate myself lower. And a lot of, act actually, a lot of reviews were very positive. I'm very surprised at this point. So with the guy, the editor slash owner slash everything, we resumed conversations about the second contract. And here I had already been able to see the book in physical form. And my sixth sense, although inexperienced, had found that the editor, the editing was obviously a disaster. And there were a lot of things that were written wrong. Even things that were good in the original version. And even smaller things like stuff that usually like an ultra-correct feature would just do automatically. Like it was that bad. The wor But the worst, the absolute worst part was that I found out that I was missing a chapter. Yep. My book that I had already sold 70 copies of that it was so beautiful, masterpiece, amazing, insane, you're such a good person, blah, 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 whatever. It was missing a fucking chapter. And no one realized it. Not me, not him and his team, which I, it, it probably was also non-existent. It, it turned out to be my bad, something that happened when I was like copying and pasting things to give it a more decent format. But I'm pretty sure if he had at least skimmed the book, like at least read through the titles of the chapters, he would have noticed that 37 didn't come after 35. You get me? And on top of that, the title of the chapter that was missing, 36, was the truth. <laughs> because it literally explained the entire plot in a cliche style of the villain with his master plan. So it was very obvious. Like if you read through it just literally, you'll be like, what the fuck? What, what's this happening? What's this jump? And like, why all of a sudden people understand what's happening and I, I don't. Meanwhile, I was starting to see all the red flags, thank goodness. And I started sending proposals to other places which I shouldn't have done without terminating the contract first, but obviously it was a little stupid and I had no idea what I was doing. I kept working on the marketing of the book by myself and I offered to create videos and promotional materials for them, for free, for my book. And so just, just so they could post them, I was like, oh, maybe, you know, they're small, they don't have a graphic designer, clearly, because my cover was way better than whatever they did. So I'll just create the things myself, and they just have to put it in social media. Everyone's happy. I offered to help with promoting other books they had published as well. You see, my brain, it was like, oh, if they're more famous and prestigious, it's going to be better for me, because I can just do the whole saga and everything with them and maybe we can grow together i have this thing that i really like to work with like small businesses small authors small people small everything because i am very much prone of like that growth mindset that was my my other facet of my dream like i'm growing together with the publishing house I was there when they were in the beginning. They're always going to love me. And now they're going to be big. And I'm going to be big with them. Which obviously didn't happen. Because they were just taking advantage of me. I'm not going to say they scammed me. Because in theory it was very obvious. The red flags. But I feel very scammed. I also offered to make book trailers. For it. And I actually have. Not of this story. But I have a few in this channel. If you want to check them out. And everything. I offered everything to them. 
These people weren't even in Instagram. And it was 2015, so Instagram was known by then. I had an Instagram account. Why you was a publishing company didn't. Um, the whole marketing proposal email was in May 6th. And they didn't answer. He didn't answer. So I decided to send him another one on the 19th. And he just said, oh, my bad. I was just so busy. I'm just going to read through it and then get back to you. In the meantime, not everything was perfect, obviously. I had a reader that had a very bad experience with a bookstore that had supposedly ordered the book, but it never arrived. Remember, I was also posting stuff in Wattpad. In the end, they said that I could just leave it. So I left like the entire thing without editing. It, so a lot of people found me through the internet. They wanted to buy the book. And then this person was like, Joe, like, I literally want to buy it. Why don't they let me buy it? So I sent, them, I sent him another email, right? I responded with just like all the information to this guy. And it was a Spanish bookstore. So I shouldn't have any issues because they were based on Spain. Well, he went MIA again, like completely for one, two, three, four months. And I even started to tweet to them. I started to just mention the account, trying to send them the DMs. If you go through like my Twitter history, please don't. But if you do, <laughs> you see me just saying like, hello, question marks and adding their official account, which is Edición Casas, by the way. If you want to check it out, they don't exist anymore. Plot twist. Um, spoiler. What's this plot twist? was a spoiler. Spoiler. That was it. I never knew about them ever again. I never received, received any royalties for the ebooks that I know had sold because, like, people next to me I saw with my own two eyes that were purchasing it on Google Play in that exact same moment. And I was never able to contact them again under any means. In February of the year after, Gauss was still on their page for Latin America and Spain. And by August, the page was no longer there. It just didn't exist. And uh, so I was left there with nothing. I luckily hadn't signed the second contract. And I just, without knowing how it all ended, if something happened to them, or why they disappeared from the face of the earth, and much less why they didn't tell me anything. I was just just left completely alone and kind of worse than when I started. Don't get me wrong, those experiences that I had like as an author with something on like physically, I would always remember. But the book just became a shame for me. I felt so ashamed to not had realized this very obvious thing that had happened to me. And many people ask me why I didn't sue them. And honestly, I just wanted to like, just put it behind me. But even then, it's so hard for me to think about the actual book. I don't have issues talking about the the story of everything that happened to, to me in this particular um, situation. But to think about the actual book, I just... I don't know if I can ever touch it again. I feel that it was just so disrespected that I wouldn't even know how to process it. And that was just the beginning of it. I know you're not supposed to explain your own jokes. But I think that I'm probably the only one that noticed it because I am the one doing it. But I hope that it's very obvious that I'm changing clothing and makeup to go according to the aesthetic of the story and also the book and the story that I'm saying. This happened a few years later than the last one. Actually... Really long time afterwards, that was 2015, this was 2022. This both happened very back and forth, the last two. It's just three. 
this video is already long enough. It's the mist surrounding a story too good to be true. Elada had thought her best friend had disappeared until she saves her from a suicide attempt. Would she know why everyone in town seems to be hiding something from her? A while back, I lost you. I remember you like a dream, fading, before the, start, the sun came up. This time, I won't let it happen. It's a promise for us, even if the whole world is against us. I just want to ask you one thing, and I promise it will be the last. Why is everyone looking at me as if they knew something? I don't. Ella, why are you hiding something too? This is a synopsis of La Neblina Que Nos Rodea, which is the mist that surrounds us. So, El Lector is an actual publishing house that's based in Paraguay, which I guess with an English pronunciation would be a Paraguay. <laughs> And this is probably the least traumatic story, even though I didn't remember half of the things that I put up in the script and it turned out to be kind of... Mm. Anyways... But it's still, I think it's still the least traumatic of all of them. It is almost a palate cleanser before the worst. The last one is the most unhinged one. And I cannot promise that I will stay sane and focused with that last one. It is a pandemonium, if you will. That's a treat. I have friends that have published with Elector which means the reader, and they live in Paraguay, but still they were very successful and they had a very good experience with the publishing house. And actually, they scouted me because one of those friends recommended me. Initially, I sent them the proposal for writing two of my stories, next to which the one that I am going to talk about later, and La Neblina Que Nos Rodea, which I will call The Mist, just for the sake of being short. It's too long. They were interested in expanding their international read reach. Uh, words are hard. So I sent them the statistics for both stories in Wattpad and I showed them age groups and countries where the stories were read. After several email conversations, a Zoom interview, and a few more back and forth through WhatsApp, they offered me $200 for the first year for the mist and then a certain percentage of royalties the second year. Funnily enough, I had originally asked for 700, 700 for that specific story, but whatever. I signed the two-year contract, and I was as happy as ever. This was actually the real deal. They were an actual traditional publishing house that were sending me money to publish me, and they had scouted me. They had read through the thing. They understood what it was about. And they knew I already had a market that I had been working on for years. I already had a reader base. So this looked like it was finally going to be it. Correct? Incorrect. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it's, it's probably not enough money. But, and I understand that my, my book's worth more. But it was something. Okay? It was something. At that point, I also already lived here in the States. I knew they were small. They were just starting to expand. So I didn't really care that much about the money. I wanted just the exposure and actually just putting myself out there in the world. And they conceded in giving me the international and ebook rights and were present to respond to my questions. And um, they were very there, at least at the beginning. They also had a lot of social media presence in our specific niche, which was like young adult of like Spanish speaking books that were specifically 
gotten out of Wattpad, but then again, like, became, like, complete successes. And uh, I was in direct communication with the person that was contacting the authors, which actually was the one managing the entire branch of that publishing house that was starting out that, again, they were just very small. They were trying to expand their reach. I'm cold, so I'm going to get my, my Barbie thing. What's the name of this? Blanket. My Barbie blanket. I start losing it. Like, the, the deeper that I go on these experiences, the worse it gets, gets. And I start losing it a little bit. But I think it's important that you see the descending to madness, which, again, is very hilarious knowing the last part of the video and the story that it's about. Because that's how much it has affected me in a psychological level. And this was more recent. This ended in 2023, basically. And the other one as well, the first, the, the next one, the first one was way, way, way back, 2014, 2015. So the guy that I was talking to that basically managed the whole thing, we had conversations in WhatsApp, back and forth, especially for little things like, hey, when, when's the meeting? What's a better time for you? This and this, let's schedule it. All, all that jazz. It was just like a little bit easier than email. He was really nice, again, but he was clearly someone that appeared to be very unexperienced and a few times talked to me in a very unprofessional way on WhatsApp, as if we were friends. Uh, we would send memes to each other, like WhatsApp stickers, um, be like, oh, do you remember the meeting? LOL, I forgot, thanks for reminding me. Things like that, right? That's, that's how it started. I, I really didn't mind, like I'm not very like a stock up per person and right now on my both of my jobs that I currently have. Um, very colloquial as well, you know, like you're still polite and educated, but like you can know how to be casual in a professional setting, which this guy eventually wasn't. And uh, he was, again, very extremely present to respond to any question that I had. No matter what the time of day was, um, if it was um, office hours or not, he sometimes would respond to me the next day, but he would get back to me with all the answers that I needed. And I appreciated that a lot, especially because it seemed like it was someone that I could very well work more like closely like to make sure that my book was as good as it got. And we worked together in the marketing for the book and how we wanted to do the announcement and so on. We sent, again, memes to each other. We had, like, a very friendly relationship. And uh, I also had a very good relationship in social media with their social media accounts. And in between accounts, we would message each other, sorry, allergies, back and forth to build hype for the moment of the announcement and what the story was going to be and all of that. So it was good and it worked and it generated a lot of hype. I remember actually like a TikTok that I did like super viral in my context. It was, it was like 10K views. I'm, I'm used to like 500. Eventually, of course, the communication started to be more scarce. And I still have the whole thing like the whole conversation with this guy. But I don't think you want me to go through all the WhatsApp, WhatsApp messages in Spanish and translate them one by one, the same way that I did with the other emails. I think the emails provided context that I, I think the WhatsApp messages are not necessarily needed. If uh, you're looking at this and you really feel like, I don't know, you don't believe me, or like you need to see the messages, I have them, and like I can just put them somewhere. But uh, I don't think it provides that much valuable information. It's just like you would see the stickers, the type of like stickers that we send to each other, basically. But I'll just sum it up. So when I was writing this script, I had already written some things for me explaining the situation to other people, but I had never gone 
through the actual conversation that I had with this man up to this point. So once I started writing this, I was like, oh, I had the emails from the other story. Might as well just like go through some receipts of this as well, because it was also very short. And then I read some of the things that were in the conversation. And I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? <laughs> so I, I really re I remember, right? There were certain offhanded comments because I also remember talking to my friends about it and they were like, bro, I was like, yeah, but you know, like I'm just leaving it be, keeping it professional. So I put some of those parts of the conversation in here. And again, it's kind of hard, right? Because you're like, this guy was also young. But like, you're, I am a young woman that is trying to do all of this alone. And I kept these two occasions interacting with men that clearly didn't take me seriously. And uh, this one was a very different experience from the other one. But it doesn't mean that I wasn't bad. It was concerning. Okay, so I remember and I read through the thing again and I missed one time that I messaged him asking him when he was going to send out the contract. And uh, I believe after some context that I was able to gather, there was like a kind of like a time difference on, on a also on occasion. I would message him at like 4 p.m. here, but it would be like night over there. So instead of him messaging me, like, the next day, he'll be like, oh, hey, what's up, even though it was late. Uh, he messaged me that one time. He responded. He was like, hi, I'm sorry. I'm drunk right now. Ha <laughs> ha. And uh, then he sent, a, he sent a message of like, oh, I'm just going to send the contract before lunch tomorrow. Don't worry about it. I just said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Enjoy yourself. We'll talk tomorrow. Like, you don't have to be talking to me when you're, like, out with your friends or something. And uh, that that was like the first instance of something weird, like something fishy going in the conversations in general. But one thing is that I actually had to constantly message him to remind him when he we had meetings or just ask him when we were going to finally sign the actual contract or, or what. And he would send me WhatsApp stickers with guys winking and like, some things that would be 1,000% considered flirty into any type of situation. Like, things like, like, you know when someone's trying to risk you up? It was like that. And I read through it, and it's kind of cringe. And we had been talking about the book for, I believe, two months now. And one time I asked him when they were going to put a certain flyer on Instagram, basically just something saying like, oh, Beatrice is now part of this publishing house. Welcome. You know, that kind of announcement, even though that they weren't, they had announced the book just yet. Editing B here, what's up? I went back and checked. This was actually the announcement for the book. The announcement that I was part of the publishing house had already been made. And that was the reason why my communication with this guy was more regular and in retrospective i think that's also the reason why he thought he could get away with the things that he was doing because it was official and it had been publicly said that i was part of the team and we were talking about that i messaged i kept asking him repeatedly like oh when is it going to happen when is it going to happen can it was because it was also going to be a shared post in instagram I have, uh, like, I'm very freaky with my social media strategies in my own personal account, so I needed to have everything perfect. So I asked him when he was going to put it, and before asking him, like, I had asked him several times, sorry, I'm going off the script, so I'm starting to be delirious, and it's also 12, 12 a.m. right now. I say hi first to him. I'm like, hi, how are you? With the intent of asking him about this flyer. And then he just said like, <laughs> horny, LOL. <laughs> I was like, 
what? <laughs> What's happening? And obviously, I didn't know what to say. I think I sent a screenshot to my friends that were in the publishing house. And they were like, oh my god, William! And... Uh, as far as I know, uh, he never spoke to any other authors like that. It was a um, thing with me specifically. Because I asked and they didn't say anything. Uh, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. And I didn't know what to say. So I, I just said like, ha, 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 what? Question mark. Like, it was clearly like, it was all caps, nervous laugh. And I was just nervous and very confused. I just wanted a straight answer about my Instagram flyer. That was it. And, and he just responded with a sticker of, like, like this kid that was doing, like, like, I don't know how to be a fuckboy, right? So I don't know how to, I don't know how to be a fuckboy, so I don't know how to do the face, but it was, like, it was, like, very common during, like, COVID. He just sent me that, and then he sent me a, 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 another sticker that it was just, like, a kitty dancing, like, like this. And I was just, like, What's going on? Like, am I, mean, I mean, am I in the alternate dimension that I once wrote about? It was weird. Uh, so, I don't know. But it was like 5 p.m. for me. Again, maybe it was late for him. I'm not sure. And I was just like, mm. And he then responded with like, what? My sincerity mode is on. And that, that is the literal translation of what he said in Spanish which I find it absolutely hilarious. And I I was kind of weirded out still. I wanted answers for my stuff. <laughs> and I sent a meme of like, I believe it's a sto- it's, uh, SpongeBob. It's like a, like a tomb and says, here lies, here lies uh, me, El Mayo, bye. Or something like that. And uh, he insisted he was like, what does that mean? Does that mean you're horny too? And I was like, I was really trying to play it cool. It wasn't working. So he tried to explain himself. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. I just took like this candy. And like one of the side effects is that it's an aphrodisiac. And that's why I feel like that. And I was just being sincere with you. And I was just ignoring those types of messages. And I was still trying to bring up the conversation about the fucking Instagram flyer. At this point, I just wanted to have my social media strategy planned. Because I'm like, I'm very OCD with that. And uh, I just, I was just trying to play cool. I was sending reaction images that I was like, ha, I don't want to know about that. Like TMI. <laughs> no, thank you. And it was basically like, I'm not going to ask. I don't want to know. Keep it to yourself. And in the end, he mentioned once last time, probably to see my reaction or something. Oh, you know, I'm just horny and alone on Valentine's Day. This was, for, this was actually Valentine's Day. I At that point, I just told him, well, you shouldn't have taken that candy. You wouldn't feel like that. Now, bye. So, yeah, it was very weird. Eventually, that announcement was made, the Instagram flyer was posted, and we kept talking from time to time about the book, about ideas for like certain TikToks that I could record, or they had some, I think some contracts with some influencers from over there from Paraguay, so some ideas for like TikTok videos that they could make to make marketing with me, and sometimes it was good, healthy, back and forth. And a couple of times when I reached out, he insisted with things like I would be like, oh, hey, how are you? I was going to ask you about this. And he was like, OK, we can talk, but be careful because I feel very hot right now. What? I tell you, the more I spend in this video, the more delusional I get. So, yeah, again, writing the script, going through the conversation while writing the script. I repeated myself. Beautiful. I found he asked me if I had an OnlyFans account. I was like, it just, it was so uncalled for. We're just talking about the book. Everything was good. And then all of a sudden, by the way, they have OnlyFans. And I was like, no. He was like, oh, so sad. 
Sir, stop. Get some help. I, I want to cry. Because I forgot about all of this stuff. Like, my brain had just, like, disintegrated it. I, in my brain, I was like, oh, he made one offhand comment one time. No, it wasn't like that. It was constant. And I felt like I had, I felt the pressure of keeping it cool because everything else with the book was going so good. And I didn't want to fuck it up. And he was the owner. So, like, I couldn't even talk to anyone about this. I really wanted this to happen. Especially after that first experience. I was like, this is it. This is real. This is someone that's more legit. I actually had done my research. I actually knew a lot of people that had very good experiences with these people. So I, I just played it cool. And I just kept ignoring that. It, it's, it's just nasty. And it makes me sick. And uh, uh, I, need a, I need a second. So besides that, when the conversations weren't tried to be directed towards that particular topic, a lot of the times it was just him apologizing time and time again uh, because he was taking super long to respond or not paying on time. And he in general had extremely poor time management. This man clearly didn't have experience to manage these types of things. And I think they just threw him to the wolves, to be fair. He probably didn't even want to be in that position as far as I'm aware. It was something that his family, his family managed and they just kind of like gave that branch specifically to him in like a shit ton of money and he was just winging it. Um, at one time, he actually asked me to have patience because they were having money issues and they hadn't paid me yet. They actually... The $200, they, they said that they didn't have enough money, so they were going to pay, pay it in, like, several installments. But, like, none of it what was happening, not even the first one. And, uh, again, this is now I'm on the opposite side. At this moment, I was living in the U.S., and I had easier access to dollars than they didn't because they live in Paraguay. So I tried to be as understanding as possible, and that's why I was just like, yo, like, just give me something, even if it's symbolical. I understand how hard it is to get U.S. dollars sometimes, and especially a lot of countries from Latin American third world countries in general. But yeah, he was like, listen, we're having money issues, so I can't pay you right now. I was like, excuse me, we have a legal contract, sir. Thank you. And uh, I was very upset. I sent him a long message being like, listen, we have a contract and you need to abide by your word, by law. I need you to give me a clear date of when you're going to do this, blah, 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 blah. He sent me a money two days later. Half of the money anyways. I think one of two of the payments, I don't remember. It wasn't the full amount. It eventually became harder and harder to get him to respond to me. Several months went through, and I was in the meantime working on the book on my own. And in one of those occasions when he had gone missing for months, and I was unsure if he was even going to respond or not, he came back to me, but he vented to me. He, I remember clearly, he just sent me like a 10-minute voice message, just venting, which I understand from a friend perspective, but basically, this was just a person that I was just doing business with. So it was also very uncalled for. And he mentioned that the publishing house was going through a lot of money issues. And even explained that they were in debt with the government of their country. And that the printing side had dropped them because they still owed them money. This man, the owner of the publishing house to an author that they were going to publish, was telling all those things. 
it was very insane, but very eye-opening. And eventually, he did disappear from the face of the earth. I learned way much later he wasn't in that position anymore. And in the end, uh, I just said, like, this is this just sm smells like trouble. I reached out to them. I asked them to cancel the contract. They, I just wanted to have my rights back. They were really nice. They were like, yeah, 100%. Absolutely. I'm so sorry. Basically, they be bit off more than they could chew. And that was pretty much it. Uh, they had only paid me $100 in the two years that had passed. Instead of the 200 for the first year, the book was never published. I never sent them the edited manuscript because when I saw all the things that were happening, I just wanted to hold it off and just make sure that we were going somewhere before just giving them my baby because I had already ha made that mistake once. And they just... They accepted to just cancel it, and there was where that ended. And then simultaneously, something else was happening. These two things just kind of like piled up together. They were 2022, 2023, and then the third thing was happening in 2023. And that was the worst one. Yeah, it really was. We finally arrived to the reason why I made this video in the first place. We did it looking like a mess, like the protagonists on the original story, and like me, when all of this happened. Little disclaimer. I already have been mentioning through the whole video that this is the story that I recent resonate with more intensely. And I can't promise to get my cool. I was already losing my cool with the last one. This is the most recent, and also it's the one that holds, again, more meaning to me. So if we go a little bit of unhinged, Please forgive me. It's still hard to talk about it. And uh, I'm going to do my best to at least be somehow coherent. But I won't promise that it will be easy. And the truth is that I don't think I can ha gather any more courage to do it later to just like do the whole setup and everything another day or anything and it's already late if i don't do it now the light just died give me a second you know there's something poetic about this because like this is the most unhinged story so i think it makes sense that like the most unhinged things happen with it happened i thought i had the evil eye or was cursed i still i still think about it sometimes so welcome to the broken nexus of my shattered dreams bo is like any other person living in zambano unhappy and eager to fill the voids in her life with illicit substances her life revolves around losing herself at night and forcing herself to maintain a smile during the day while she works. Until one day she finds the entrance to a nightclub with no exit and starts appearing in it in inexplicable ways. Every morning after these experiences, she convinces herself that it was a dream and the terrifying entity that only she can see confirms it. But when she begins to see the same person who is always there, also in the hotel where she works, her sense of reality will distort until her life completely changes. This is a synopsis from Nexo, which means Nexus in Spanish. So here we go. 
as long as I can scroll with the mouse. This is the last story, the most painful one, as I already said, and the one that I still have nightmares about. The one that I still feel so anxious to talk about even right now. Even um, I was able, even though I was able to say all of this publicly in January last year, I still have some sequels of it. Like I'm, I'm still not okay because of it. And uh, that was actually the reason that I made the video in the first place. It makes me very nervous, not only because of the toll, the mental toll and the emotional toll that it took, but also because of who this is about and how big they are comparing to the little publishing houses that I had been speaking about, speaking about before. And despite knowing that I didn't do anything wrong, I just because of everything that happened and the way that everything developed, and to be fair, the unfairness of it all, I am still very afraid. And I still to this day feel that I have everything to lose. I didn't know if I should even talk about this or not, but it just wasn't fair for me to just keep quiet and just to pretend that everything was fine and that I hadn't experienced something that hurt me a lot and that I, I still haven't fully digested. Again, please, please remember because I'm very scared Everything that I'm telling here, it's my personal experience, my point of view, and the things that I lived through from my, my, my point of view, it's my experience, it's mine, my reality. It's just my version of the events, it's happened to me. I am not trying to slander, insult, or defame anyone or look for any kind of problem. I am just telling my story how it happened to me. I'm telling my truth. That's it. I've been writing in Wattpad since 2012, and I have given a large part of my life to it. I don't have the time or mental fortitude to explain right now why I have loved Wattpad so much or how much it means to me even in this moment. I might make a video about it eventually. I know some people just see what, but as a stupid place where teens just post their dumb fanfics and uh, maybe some part of it we is. And is that really that wrong? But the platform has also been giving a lot of very big opportunities to a lot of authors for a long time, especially lately. And started a few years ago, the Spanish speaking community um, the Spanish speaking community of our authors. I don't even, I'm not reading at this point. My, my vision is very blurry. The Spanish speaking authors started getting a lot of these opportunities as well. So in 2021, I wrote a book called Nexo. It talks a lot. It talks about a lot of sensitive topics and it has a lot of mature content, an insane amount of trigger warnings. It's very intense. My objective with this book was showing how even though something can seem fun and glamorous on the outside, it can be very rotten on the inside. And it's based on a lot of personal experiences and trauma I endured when I was living in Miami. It, it has the same idea of Requiem for a Dream, the movie that explores the descent of the protagonist into madness and self-hatred. In the Requiem for a Dream perspective, it was mostly dealing with addiction. In Nexo perspective, it was just more like um, codependency and like psychological just rot. It was just, it, it was just rotten. It, the book is written in first person. It is what I like writing the most. And again, I previously mentioned that I put very important parts of me within everything that I write. And I connect a lot 
with the protagonist. I joke around a lot and I say, oh my God, everything that I write is a self-insert, but it, it has a sliver of truth, even though so it sounds stupid, because I am connected in a very deep emotional level with a lot of the characters and the situations that I portray in my books. It's the way that I like to write and it's the way that people have told me that they like because they feel like characters are real people because they are, they are me. So again, first person in present tense and it borders on magical realism because that's the way that I like to do things. It's also very important for the way that the story, the way in which the story is told and also the message that the story is trying to give. My idea when I wrote this was always having the reader go through the same kind of like emotional and psychological roller coaster that the protagonist Bo goes. And I'm telling you all of this because this is very, very relevant to what happened next. So again, the point is that it's extremely, extremely inspired in my personal experiences and things I saw and lived through when I was in a certain period of my life. And precisely because I went through all those things that were not good, I wanted to write something to try to help other people learn what I learned without the necessity of them having to go through the same thing. Because I really, really don't want anyone to go through them ever. Hey, it's me again. I just wanted to come back and reiterate that this is in fact going to be a little bit more of an unhinged roller coaster that I had already been previously letting you know ahead of time on the video. It's not going to have a lot of heavy editing, even though there's a lot of redundancy because that is something that is very emotional for me. And I believe leaving my honest reactions to the situation and how much it has affected me psychologically and how it's clearly evident in the way that I explain things gives you a more transparent picture of the whole story and situation. So I apologize in advance if this is a little bit too unorganized for you, but it's a type of story that honestly requires it. Anyways, back to the video. I just wanted people to just don't put themselves in danger as I clearly put myself in, in more than one opportunity, every single week sometimes, several times a week. And just, it's my way of like, I don't know, protecting people before, because I couldn't be protected. And even then I was. I, I don't really wish it on anyone and I'm going to go off the script here because talking to me, this is so important. I put myself in so much danger and I am not in a state where I could be and I could be way worse. I think because of sheer luck, because I, I had a guardian angel, because it was not my best. I don't know. But seeing in retrospect some things, like, it just makes me so scared because I know what could have happened. And not being worse than it was, like, it was so easy for it to get worse in a second, especially with, like, how frequent the thing. It was pure self-hatred. It was harming yourself without physically doing it. It was putting yourself in dangerous situations on purpose because um, myself, because I didn't have regard for my own life and I didn't respect myself. And through that, in all those experiences, I learned how you have to do things like respect yourself and hold yourself in a higher value. So this story was just showing 
the worst thing that could have happened. So it's this girl ball that it's kind of just like doing all these things. And it's the very apparent, very, very, very noticeable if you read it, even if you skim, skim through it, that she starts getting worse and worse. And again, in the story, not going to spoil it. I want to translate it eventually. The worst happens. And when you finish reading it, you are left, not only because I have read it, but also like a lot of people that have read it have told me, you're left feeling like, what? Like, oh my God, like, what? I I don't, I don't like this. I, I don't like this. I, I'm not okay with this. What What's going on? And it starts having them question, oh my God, I never want to do anything like this, which was my point. It was my idea, right? But for people to realize all of that and for me to actually like tell my message. I had to find readers. And uh, Nexo was actually the book that made me grow 10,000 followers on Instagram in a single month. It got huge, huge for my standards. And uh, I promoted that book like crazy so much the only other time that i have promoted a book that bad has been my two times my peter pan retelling and right now here in youtube with behind the veil that i'm just like giving in my own but like you have no idea all the work that i put into promoting that and it had so much clickbait potential so much clickbait so i use the clickbait every single time Every single Instagram reel, every single YouTube video, uh, YouTube video, no, I wasn't doing YouTube by then. Every single TikTok video, it just was just clickbait after clickbait after clickbait. And I was like, I'm going to get them hooked with pretending that this is fun and glamorous. Again, it was this idea of just like the same concept of the protagonist. She's just going to that lifestyle because it looks nice. And then she's like, oh, where did I get myself into? That was why I promoted it the way that I did. I wanted people to believe that it was all fun and games and then get hit with reality because I wasn't until it was too late and it could have been later. Like worse. I'm going insane. In August of 2022, someone from Wattpad Webtoon Studios reached out to me. Yes, sir. They're such a big company. Do you know who owns Wattpad? The same people that own Webtoon. They're huge. And they reached out to me. It was the first time in my life someone with actual power reached out to me. And they were like, we want you. We want you, we want that particular story. We saw you. We, we see you for what you are. We saw your effort. And we are giving you your fucking dream. Finally, it wasn't a small publishing house. It wasn't a startup. It wasn't a scam. So the person that contacted me was someone that worked as a scout for Spanish-speaking authors. And they just told me they were interested in the book. After that, someone else followed like with a more formal email. And in the email, they ex explain. Um, and I don't want to show it because what? But it's huge and I'm still very afraid because I know I didn't do anything wrong. But this, I know, pen paints them in a very bad light. But it's not my fault, okay? This is my experience. Um, they offered me an opportunity to share my book with their partners, which they had in several entertainment and publishing companies worldwide. So this wasn't a publishing contract, but it was giving them my rights for two years. So that way they could offer my story to their partners. And following that same contract that they were offering to me now, 
personal friends of mine and a lot of people that I know have gotten big deals with like Penguin Random House. I have several of the books that my friends have released and I'm so proud with like Penguin Random House and like Planeta, like again, all this very big renowned publishing companies that actually made their dreams come through. And I saw them with my own eyes again and again and again and again for years. Thanks to Wattpad. They gave one of my other friends a game deal, like um, kind of like a visual novel type of like mobile game. I think it was an episode in like Choices. They gave other specifically Spanish speaking authors that like got big because of their publications with them movie deals. Uh, have you have you heard about like Through My Window from Mariana Godoy? That movie deal was gotten through. Wattpad, and it was like the first movie deal that was done through Wattpad Webtoon Studios in general, because like they're separate companies. It's like the same, different entities under the same umbrella company. It was the first movie deal that they did for like a Spanish speaking author. This was the same company that now told me, we want you, baby. We want to offer you to all of these people. And to be fair, like, the story is very marketable, especially in that time, 2022, 2023. The story was, I think it was 2020, no, 2022, because 2023 was last year. 2022, the story has a lot of like euphoria aesthetic. So companies were going to eat it up. Finally, I, I, I just said like, this is it. This is it because they're big. This is it because I have seen it realized for so many people that I know and so many people that like I have just seen with my own two eyes. This is it. And this is what I deserve. This is what I've been working for for the past 15 years. It's here. I just need to be patient, have them offer the story and just, I know, I know my book had potential. They just had to go and offer it to someone. That was it. So I just had to wait. Still, it's very important to emphasize that Wattpad Webtoon Studios is something separate from the actual Wattpad platform, the Wattpad web page, and like separate from Webtoon itself. Um, as far as I'm aware and what I understood with the whole contract thing and everything, it's like the platform is one thing, they're handled by a group of people. And then what about Webtoon Studios, which I'm going to call Studios for short, is just the people that act like agents, like that thing that's actually so much needed, like in the Spanish speaking like community of authors and publishing. They act as those liaisons offering to different other companies. So th there's two different things. They talk to each other, but they are different entities. And that's so important because for legal reasons, like I, I cannot, cannot emphasize that enough. They're different things. So when I say platform, I am talking about someone that is completely different from the people that reached out to me in the first place. They scout studio scout stories that are from Wattpad and that are from Webtoon, and then they act as agents towards the partners that they have which they believe them because they already had gotten through like a, a process. So I signed the contract about September and uh, last the October, when that happened in October, 2022, the Nexo just disappeared from the platform without any trace or explanation. It's 
a commonly known glitch and sometimes stories just disappear but like after delivering cash logging into a mobile app on something they just show on fine oh my god and i still wish like i wish that i could wake up and realize that it was all a terrible nightmare and just have it be there but just not have lost I didn't lose a manuscript, of course. It, it was just all the comments that of people saying that it was making them feel things that they were connecting so much. All the opportunities that I could have gotten, all the lives it touched, all the reads it had, like all the numbers, all the reach that would finally like made me someone because i'm still no one i don't even know why someone would watch this video but i'm getting ahead of myself and i thought i was gonna cry but i think i'm not going to because more than sad i'm so upset still i'm so furious just <sighs> at first I didn't get scared but the days passed and there was still nothing about the story and my readers were sending me messages through social media like through Wattpad and like Instagram and all these things like oh I can't find this I can't find this what happened I wanted to read it I was in the middle of it what happened what happened I want to read the fucking story and uh, did you delete it? Why did you take it away from us? And I was like, why did they take it away from me? So at that moment, I thought that it had something to do with the explicit ex scenes. Again, like it contained my church, like themes. And I was like, oh, maybe something like that. Maybe I have to rewrite something. Um, I sent a lot of tickets to support. And they didn't respond besides just a generic answer, letting me know the reasons why generally stories get deleted from the platform but since studios were the ones with the rights for it i contacted them directly so i was never ever 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 able to communicate directly with the platform and i just sent tickets that's it like i couldn't talk to them but i was like okay you know what I don't have the rights to the story. So studios are the ones that are going to have to communicate with platform and then they'll get you an agreement because studios wants to have the story because they already signed a contract for it and they want to offer it. Um, whatever, every single response that I got from the platform was a generic, auto-generated, whatever response. And I... And with a link to the content roots. And I reread every single detail of it again and again and again and again and again. And I remember there was a point where I sent an, an email detailing in every single part of the rules how my story abided through every single one of them. That, that, that's how insane I was at this point. It took me like two hours, probably more. So... Uh, studio started trying to communicate with platform the best way that they could and trying to do as much as they could because they were very confused and they have no way of knowing what the platform is doing because again, separate entities. And uh, they basically were my messengers, asked them what had happened to the story and the platform agreed that yes, they had purposely deleted the story it wasn't a glitch they did it they chose to do it and they did it and they were confirming it to studios which were the ones that actually owned the rights to it uh, i was like what the fuck and i asked studios hey like is there something that is wrong with the story i offered so many times to rewrite scenes to change scenes to delete scenes to rewrite entire portions of the book take stuff out to do the whole thing write the book again in a different point of view every like i 
offered everything. I said, I am available every single day, every single hour, 24 seven. If you want to have a meeting, if you want to have email communication, anything, anything at all, just talk to me. Just talk to me. I'm here. I made this. It's based on my life, on my trauma. Talk to me. So I asked studios if, well, they were saying exactly what had happened, what the reason was. I could re-upload it. Um, a censored version, no mature scenes at all. Um, just so, so I could not lose the Halloween hype because in Nexo is a horror, psychological horror story, if it wasn't obvious by now. And they said, okay, you know what? Yeah, rewrite it. You know, um, we'll deal with communicating with platform. Uh, not, not even rewrite it, re-upload it. Um, just make sure, you know, like, since we don't know why this happened, just don't put anything explicit in the story of, as of now. And uh, I started uploading that version. And at that time, I really thought that it was for the sexual scenes, especially a particular one that happens as a sleep paralysis. And it's it's a little bit delicate. I, it's treated correctly. And frankly, like, I, I, I'll go, I'll take it to my grave. Like, nothing in there that is wrong is romanticized because the book is really like the intent is the opposite. And I read it and reread it so many times, like around like nothing would be taken like the wrong way, really, if you just have like common sense, basically. Um, so yeah, at the end, I was just re-uploading this censored thing and the platform responded to studios. Are you ready for the response? Because I'm not. I'm still not. I want to sit on the floor, but like I can't point the camera at the floor. They said that they consider that my story promoted drug consumption. And that since supposedly the plot revolved around the topic of drugs, it was not allowed within the platform, which actually not even that, if it had revolved around that, it was not in their um, their contents, their, their rules and guidelines, by the way. But my, my plot didn't even revolve about drugs. It revolved about around a girl that got obsessed with another girl and started stalking her so much that she was even stalking her in her dreams. And she just became crazy because of that. It's a story about self-hatred and find, trying to find love outside of yourself instead of loving yourself. A child, 10-year-old child with minimum of reading comprehensions would have realized that this was not about drugs. Drugs weren't like even mentioned. Like there wasn't a scene where a character was doing drugs. They were just in the background. She like Bo at some point she mentioned taking a single pink pill that is actually based around my allergy pills that I take because I suffer from allergies. And it was just a placebo for her to let herself go completely crazy, completely insane, like just lose control. Again, it was very, very obvious what this was about, but it was clearly not about promoting drug consumption, especially, and it, this hurts me, especially again, after note it, noting what this is based on, like, how the fuck are you going to say that to me, bro? The way the book is written is intended to be confusing in the moments 
when the protagonist feels lost or hazy. And again, it's first person. It's in present. She wanted to feel consumed by all this redundant, yes, but consumption of like external stuff. So especially the very beginning of the book, uh, which is what I think the only thing that they skimmed, there's a scene where she's in a, in the nightclub and there's just lights and people moving around and like smells and it's like a very sensory experience. And a lot of people like commented on those paragraphs like, oh my God, reading this, this is textual words that I, I remember vividly. Oh my God, reading this book makes me feel like I am on drugs. Again, that is the first person experience of the protagonist that if it makes you feel like that, and if you are understanding that the character feels like that, I did a pretty good job writing, right? Well, it was completely taken out of context. And the what but platform said that he actually said, oh, wow, this book makes me do drugs. I would say that they go lost in translation, but I just think they didn't even care at that point. They just did Google Translate, saw the word, and they were like, oh, I don't have time to deal with this. I don't even speak this language. I'm not going to grab someone that speaks this language and have them review it for me, since especially our partner company, that is the another entity of our, our parent company, has the rights to this. So they actually went through an excruciating amount of betting beforehand to make sure that this a bid by our rules so maybe i should have someone that speaks spanish no nothing mm -mm, nothing it actually got worse and the platform never accepted to communicate with me so i only had the version of the stories said by the studios person which actually i think they did their best and i this is no fault on the studios at all it is all the fault of what but platform anyways the platform told studios that i couldn't re-upload the story not even censored not anything no that the story was absolutely 100 percent prohibited and and if I continue trying to upload it and censor it or changing it or uploading it through another name or everything, they threatened to delete my account, which was the only way that I had to get to my readers. And still, it's the only way that I have. They also took down an experimental visual poetry book called Bo, like the protagonist, which was the only thing that kept me from not taking my own life when I was extremely depressed, by the way. I didn't have, uh, FYI, this is TMI, but whatever. I didn't have any backups of that, so I lost those poems forever, and they, mean, they meant a lot to me. And they also took down a short story called Dance Macabre, which is uh, about a ballerina that just thinks that blood has music, and they start killing people. She starts killing people. Like, it's a slasher story. Like, what the f they never gave me reason for any of those stories and they never acknowledged that they took them down to studios and studios only had the rights for Nexus, so it's not like they could really ask about the other ones. They also advised them to tell me to remove another story called Dulce, which means sweet, or they were gonna take it down, again, threatening with taking my account down and taking all the work that I had done for like 15 years by building some sort of presence in this, the only writing platform where that actually has some traction and the people actually use. That is not AO3 because that's usually for fanfics and it's necessarily like AO3 is not something that you build a career of, right? Like people have built their careers on what, but The accusations from them were awful. They said, I was promoting 
child moving from one place to another. I have used so many buzzwords, but I think this one I prefer not to use. Taking children from some one place without their agreement and then putting them in another place for not good reasons. They said I was promoting that. I <laughs> have you seen me? Like that story was actually based upon two things. Taggart from Melanie Martinez and the book slash movie The Lovely Bones. And they said that I was promoting that only because the story was about a girl that succumbed to a terrible fate because of talking to strangers. And that short story had a poem. And the poem started with the letters G, like each line, one started with the letter G, the other one started with H, and the other started with B. That was it. That was her explanation. Because of that particular poem in those letters, I was promoting that. And they were threatening in me. And they were taking everything down and i just felt so attacked like it felt personal it felt like a big multi-million dollar corporation was going against me in particular and i still haven't recovered for that like i'm still like what the fuck and, and, and like i'm still like why me and especially like why this story that like means so much and that it's actually like i only made it because i wanted to help so many people They, they never gave me valid reasons. And like this whole the dulce thing, I only knew because the studios person told me and like they were trying to get as much information they could as possible because they actually really believed in the story. They, they were, they already, they told me, the people from studios, like to be fully transparent, they told me, we have someone in mind that we know are going to want a story. Um, we're going to offer it to them. Hopefully it goes through. But they were looking something that was very similar to what you have. So I think we have like a good prospect. Like they really believed in that. Not even they could convince the platform that I was not this like very big devil that was there just to ruin children's lives for some reason. I'm just upset, really. So, judging by their interpretation of the book and the reaction for everything, it was very apparent that no one that spoke Spanish ever even tried to pretend to read the book or the comments or whatever. And all of all of this led me very bad. You can see I'm clearly not okay compared to like the other two parts of this video. And I, I had, at that point, I had already been undergoing treatment for depression and anxiety for almost a year. And the situation just, it just sent it to hell. And I was going through a lot of personal issues. It was awful. I considered not just, con just giving up. I considered giving up in not only as an author, but also as a person. The only reason why I didn't give up was because I have a bird and he is the love of my life and I love him to death and I would never, ever, ever leave him alone. And that was literally the sole reason why I didn't give up on life. Because at this point, I felt so betrayed by everything that I had known and that I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And like, I think not having, not wanting to be hurt, to even hurt, like, just to be dismissed like that like I was nothing I given so many years of my life to this people I was about I, I was about what but ambassador for like two three years I, I wrote for like I everything I give it everything I would defend them on like conversations with people calling that stupid I would like purchase like the things that they would release for like for my friends every I give everything and they just treat treated me like worse than if I was nothing they treated me like I was a monster like I was the most vile person to walk on the face of the earth that I was nasty that I that I had to be punished 
but like I was I was desperate and I was scared and again they're a big company so this still scares me and I just wanted everything to be over so at the end of the day I just told them hey like if you're not gonna do anything I just message studios and be like hey like if they're not gonna do anything at least give me my rights back because at this point this story that is literally very heavily based on my life I don't even have the rights to it and it's not anywhere so it's not like I can publish it anywhere or or do anything it's not even mine and you can't do anything with it because the platform are being dicks with it um they sent the agreement to cancel the contract November 15th after I was more than a month just left in the dark basically and I requested so many video calls they were busy I requested so many actual like just calls they were busy they were busy they were too busy I was not I was nothing right so of course like who would make time for me anyways they were so busy that I actually got my rides back January 11th this all started in October I signed on September it was January 11th 2023 It was after a very tedious back and forth with them that really didn't go anywhere most of the times. I made the situation public on January 16 and received many comments of people being upset by it. I was very afraid the first time that I spoke about this, but I knew I had to. And I know I still have to, especially because everything that have said about it is in Spanish and it's in entirely different social media platforms. And I think if I am going to make my way as an author here, distance myself from all the bad things that have happened, I also have to understand that I am carrying this baggage and this experience is no longer, no, not only are part of who I am as an author, this is not scripted by the way, it's just me just talking bullshit are not only part of who I am as an author, but also they, they could help someone. And I've always liked to be transparent with everything that I am. And I think this is the best way to be it. Just like this, cosplaying as well, pretending I'm a mess while, while I am actually being a mess with the fucked up makeup, trying to wear the most nightclub clothes that I could find at the shortest amount of time that I had just just like that just like that Wattpad had nuked the biggest opportunity I had in my life with my most Facebook fa famous book that I had and um, despite this is scripted again despite feeling that they have wanted to silence my boys. They have just dismissed me, <laughs> to be honest. And especially knowing that this topic is so important to me, it just seems that this book in particular is something worth reading. And I'll do my best to make it available eventually in English and translate it and just do something with it. Cause it's just, I don't want people to go through that. A lot of life lessons that I have learned, I've learned through books and hey, you don't have to go to war to know the war is bad. So maybe if someone reads it, they get context and they realize that they should treat themselves a little bit better so they don't end up like me. Me from back then, at least, because I've come a long way. And I'm way better now. But I did it because I was lucky because I could have actually lost my life. Or I could have gone through situations that were way worse. Way worse. Anyways, this is it. I didn't plan an outro. An outro. But I really feel like it doesn't even need one. Need one. I think this was a lot. My bird is sleeping, so I don't have a palate cleanser. But I just wanted to say thank you for watching my first video. That's crazy. Like in this new era of YouTube that I'm having. 
thank you for being with me if you're here. Which, to be honest, I don't even know if anyone's going to watch this. But I'm, I'm tired. And I'm going to keep going, but I think for now I'm just going to go to bed. So, please be safe. Please, please, please love yourself. And don't give up. No matter how fucked up the situations that life throws at you are, please, please don't give up. Because you deserve better. Bye-bye.